Well, I finally got one of these. It's a US M17. You know, cheek filter masks that I really hate. I've actually bought an M17. Um, the reason I didn't have an M17 up until now is because, as I've said lots of times, American masks are banned from export from the States. You can only pick them up legally in um, the UK if somebody in the UK already has one or they're being sent from another country, not America. That's not a UK rule, that's an American rule. Um, so it came in its carrier bag, there's the mask itself, there's also two outserts which I won't bother putting on here, and there is also some sort of waterproof thing, bag waterproofing I guess, originally you were meant to open this bag, put the mask in it, then put it in the satchel in case the mask got wet, the cheek filters got wet. So I'm pretty sure this is an M17A2. The seller was advertising it as an M17A1, but I know it's not the first gen of M17 at least, but I couldn't find many good reference pictures between the A1 and A2 M17s. So the only way I thing I have to go on is to date stamp and that the drinking tube sort of lever is quite small, whereas as far as I'm aware actual M17 A1s had a longer lever there. I know the A1 had the resuscitation tube system that didn't work as well, but I can't actually spot that anywhere on this mask, but I think it was an additional like add-on for the other mask anyway. So let's look at the M17 then. So obviously a bit of history behind this mask. This is sort of like one of those doomed but noble projects um, that you get throughout military history. And the M17 was the idea that America needed a modern mask that didn't use old filter canisters because filters are obsolete. They want this modular, lightweight mask that's, you know, perfect in every way, brilliant, futuristic gas mask for the nuclear era. And what they actually came up with was this thing. Now, there are good and bad points about this. I love to hate on cheek filter masks, but some people in the comments have made very good arguments on why cheek filter masks aren't as bad as I say. I still think they're bad because of the internal filters, but they do have some plus sides. And a lot of people did make the argument, which I think is fair, that I can't say that the communist copies of um, American masks are the same thing as American masks because the American masks had higher workmanship on them. That's both true and not true, I guess. I mean, yeah, I can't review an American mask from a not American copy of it. That'd be like watching some sort of parody of a film and then saying I've watched the original film, I guess. But um, you can at least, you know, the cheek filter concept you can say is stupid from just using a single cheek filter mask. but. Anyway, the funny thing is, I think the Czech M10M is actually almost higher quality than the M17 in some ways. Like, the rubber on it's really good and everything else. Anyway, so let's look at this mask. So, this is the M17 A2, as far as I'm aware. It has the drinking tube on the front. It uses that American drinking tube system. Now, this does have a nice little thing for the tube to fold behind on here. Um, unlike a lot of the masks, where you have to kind of wrap it around. It's not a very long drinking tube, it's that standard American connector, which, as I've said, I'm not a massive fan on. I know the American ones are better than the communist ones, you've all told me, but, like, the Avon connector is just simply better. But let's just leave it at that. It has a drinking tube on if you want to use it. A lot of it will come down to the quality of your canteen bottle cap, rather than the actual drinking tube itself. There's a lever for moving the tube in the mask. When you push it that way, the tube goes directly forwards towards your mouth then it goes back. Okay, so there's that. So, um, the idea with the M17 was that it was going to be a lightweight gas mask that, um, you know, replaces the filter masks. It's like really slim and not bulky and everything else. The reality is the M17 is very bulky, it's a lot heavier than a lot of the pre 1950s sort of filter masks, um, or 1960s filter masks, and it's not all that brilliant. But we are going to test it and see if it still works. This particular M17 is from 1985, so it's 32 years old. So, that's quite old. The rubber still seems to be in fairly good condition. And this one is made by MSA, so Mining Safety Appliances. And, yeah. MSA make good masks, as far as I can tell, as long as the actual original design is good. The rubber looks like it's in good condition. There are a couple of little marks on it, but I don't think that's going to compromise the seal of the mask. I think it's just because it's old. Now, the M17 series has had a lot of faults with it before we even get into the whole cheek filters that can't be replaced when you're actually in combat. And, you know, um, 
a lot of the faults with M17s were things like if it was stored too long in a carrier in a certain position, the rubber would warp and it wouldn't make a good face seal. Um, you could over torque the drinking tube valve, which would break the drinking tube. The version of the resuscitation tube could flood uh, contaminated air back into the mask and kill the wearer. Um, lens discolouring, but that's not unique to the M17. So, the M17s had lots of problems, and that's before we go into the entire cheek filter debate, so let's go into that now in case you're not really aware of it. Okay, so the cheek filter debate is it's better to have cheek filters inside a mask that, although difficult to replace, will last long enough for you to do whatever mission you've been assigned with with a protective mask on, and they're a lot less bulky externally than the filter canister on the side. That's both true and untrue. Basically, the problem with these is you can't change them in combat, and I know the US doctrine is you won't be in a contaminated area long enough that you need to change the filters, but that's just stupid because, um, you know, I'm sure you've all heard the term FUBA, fucked up beyond all recognition, and, you know, like you all know about SOD's laws and those sort of things of, you know, what can go wrong will go wrong sort of things, and everything goes wrong at the worst possible times. You know, in some sort of military engagement, you can't have wishful thinking that because America's the best their mask filters are never going to expire in combat that's simply you know wishful thinking so you have a mask that has filters inside the cheeks which are very awkward to replace basically you have to take these caps off which are held on via friction weirdly of the M17 which isn't a great design um, once those caps are off you can unbutton the bits inside the mask, pull the filters out stretch the rubber back open, shove a new filter in uh, give your fingers arthritis by trying to stretch the rubber over the um, buttons to re-button up the insides and then you're good to go. You know, you see I prefer having a filter canister you just rotate off and then rotate back on. It's, you know, a really simple design and it's worked really well for every mask that's ever incorporated screw-on filters. But, you know, let's redesign the wheel and make the M17. So, as I said, it's not an awful mask in terms of how masks go. The mask worked. If you didn't have to change the filters and you had an M17 on, from what I understand, they are very comfortable. They would do the job of protecting you. The issue is, you better hope that you're out of a contaminated area by the time your filters expire or you're in real trouble. And the entire method of changing the filters is like wanting to punch a wall kind of thing. I said before in other videos, it's like trying to give birth in reverse. Um, I'm not a woman who's given birth, but I have had two kidney stones. Um, which, if you've ever passed a kidney stone, you know it's one of the most painful things that can happen to a human being. Um, and it kind of reminds me of having kidney stones <laughs> trying to change the filters on one of these masks. So, this one's in small. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe out of a cloth because it's a little bit dirty. And then I'm going to try it on and we'll see if these 30 odd year filters still work. I doubt they will, but you might be surprised. But yeah, the M17 is. A weird mask to say the least, um, but by the 1990s when America was in Desert Storm or the Gulf War, whatever you want to call it, they saw that every other army was using 40mm gas masks and they said, oh, maybe we should change our masks. I want them filters like everybody else. So, um, yeah, the M17 basically was used from the very late 50s, early 60s up until Desert Storm where in the Gulf War they realised these aren't the best things in the world to have. Um, the XM28 is one of my favourite gas masks, and that's a weird one. That's the Grasshopper, which is like a miniaturised M17, which is very cool. But again, it's still cheek filters. And although that was only meant to work against tear gas, supposedly had the problem being a compact mask that, in um, a situation where lots of tear gas is used, the filters saturate really quickly, and then you're stuck with a mask that you can barely breathe through until you can take the mask off in a non-contaminated area to put new filters in which wouldn't happen in a riot situation so again cheek filters aren't a good design anyway let me give this a quick wipe out and then we are going to try it and see if it still works right let's get the mask on now being a small this isn't an amazing fit for me but Alright, it seems to pressurise alright, so hopefully you can hear the voice diaphragm and you can come to an opinion if that's good or not. Weirdly, I can hear a weird exhale noise when I talk. I guess it's because when you talk, you're pushing the exhale valve open a bit, and then that makes a rustling noise. Very weird. Right, 
So let's first just do a quick test of isomyl acetate for non-oil. Because if I can smell the isomyl acetate, uh, I know that the mask's not going to work when I use air freshener in the enclosed space. Right, I can't smell any banana oil, so that's a good sign. So now the next step is to actually test the mask. So, um, yeah, let's get on to that now. I'm going to do the standard thing of spray a load of air freshener in a confined space. That will be make me cough and wheeze if I was in a confined space with a load of air freshener normally. But if I can't smell anything and my lungs don't collapse, then I know the mask filters are sort of working. But remember, the main point of this is to say if the seals still work on the mask. But... As I've said numerous times, you'd never buy a cheek filter mask as a surplus mask for actual survival reasons, simply because they don't make the filters for these masks anymore because the entire design is considered obsolete and, you know, in the dustbin of history. They're cool sort of things, but very impractical. So anyway, let's give it an actual test now. Right, hopefully I'm entirely in frame. We're going to test this mask now. Let's see if I can smell anything. So, I'll give that a couple of minutes. So, yeah, my impressions of the M17 so far, obviously despite what I've said all about these before, is the rubber's comfortable to wear. The only uncomfortable thing in this is the oral nasal cup is pinching into my face, but again, I think that's because this mask is a small and I'd need a medium, really. Other than that, you know, it wasn't too hard to get on, except for, you know, um, I don't need to tighten the straps very much on this to get a good seal. Now I'm getting a very, very faint whiff of the banana oil, but I can hear a little bit of air getting in somewhere, so let me try and tighten the straps even more, make the mask less comfortable. Okay, that's done up really tight now, so the mask is a lot less comfortable than it was before. I'm not sure if the smell's dissipating, because obviously, as I've said, the mask is over 30 years old. The filters could very well be as old as the mask, if not older. And it's very likely of that age that the filters are failing. Again, I'm getting a very faint whiff of the air freshener, but not enough to make me think that the mask is compromised. I think it's just that the filters, because they're long since expired, are removing like 90% plus of the stuff going into them, but some stuff isn't getting filtered out, it's coming through and I can smell it, but this is tolerable. If I wasn't actually, you know, looking out for a smell, I wouldn't notice it, but yeah, the mask, I, as far as I'm aware, the mask is pressurising fine. I can still hear a bit of wheezing through that, but hopefully it's nothing serious. As I said, I wouldn't buy this mask to use it because I know it's an old obsolete mask. I've just got it simply because, you know, I want to get an M17 because I collect respirators. So, what do I think about it? Yeah, it's fairly comfortable. I mean, yeah, it is bulky and heavy. Um, but at some point soon I'll get a video where I get all my cheek filter masks out and then I'll compare them for comfort and practicability on the cheek filter mask, but you know what I mean. But yeah, uh, this wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to wear as long as you knew your filters weren't going to expire while you were wearing it. But, as I said, the design is just stupid for a mask that doesn't use filters. And again, you could say masks like the Avon M50 and Scott GSR are the modern cheek filter masks, because they kind of use the cheek filter idea, but they attach on the outside, which is the way to do it. The Avon M50 is good, not the Scott GSR, because the Scott GSR is like the M50, but everything's made to be a bit crap. So the filters are much bulkier and heavier and don't sit flat, you know, which kind of ruins the point of how the filters are meant to work on the M50. But yeah, overall this mask isn't really all that bad. I mean, the design is flawed from the get-go, but the workmanship of the materials and everything is fine. I said this is an MSA one, and the MSA masks are generally the better end of the American masks. Um, it's a bit like that with some of the British masks, but all the modern British ones are made by Avon anyway. So that wasn't a problem, but... 
For example, with things like the S6s and a lot of the World War II masks, they could be made by all sorts of different rubber companies and the quality will really vary depending on which rubber company makes it. Companies like Avon, MSA, Baron in Canada, uh, you know, there's companies like that, Draeger in Germany, are kind of like, if you're getting a gas mask from that nation, you get those, simply because they're the companies with lots of history and experience of making rubber products, so they can make the masks better. Yeah, but yeah. Overall, um, the M17 isn't an awful mask to wear. Uh, this is going to be a bit disgusting, but let's see if the drinking tube goes into my mouth. It actually does. So, as much as the drinking tube lever could break the drinking tube as far as I'm aware if you turned it too hard, I think the system's actually good on it where it's out of the way, but then you push it and it actually goes directly into your mouth. That's a good system. It's actually better than the S10 zone where it kind of swivels in sideways and doesn't quite get into your mouth right unless you've pre-cut the tube. But yeah, let me just break the seal and see how strong the smell of air freshener is. <coughs> Yeah, um, definitely I can smell that and taste it when I uh, break the seal on the mask. So anyway, uh, let's sum up what I think about this mask. Okay, so the M uh, M17, yeah, it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. But as said, the cheek filter masks are flawed by design, so it's got that problem. Now, it's also got the problem on this that, this is going to be awkward, where... Um, some of the straps don't quite work right, so now I've tightened it, I can't undo all the straps, so I'm stuck with a mask on my head. Imagine that being stuck with an M17 on your head for eternity. Right, I'm going to struggle with this off camera to try and get the mask off. But to summarise my thoughts of it, yeah, the M17 is certainly a lot better than a lot of the communist copies of it, I'll give it that. But um, it's still a cheap filter mask by design. And obviously, filter masks are the way to go, because there's all different ways that you can attach a filter to a respirator, so it can be out the way if you complain that the filter gets in the way. Lots of, you know, countries use hoses to put the filter on a haversack or on their back or whatever else, so the filter's actually out the way. Now, ah, that's good, I can pull the mask off despite the straps being tight. But yeah, so, the M17... Really stupid design, having cheek filters like that you can't change, because as I was saying, even if they said technically you wouldn't need to change them in combat, foobar situations happen, and if you think about American military history, often the US soldiers have been in positions where they've you know not been relieved for a while, so if that was in a chemical incident, that wouldn't have been good for them. But it's an interesting mask, I can say that about it. As I said, I think the issue is it was tried to redesign the wheel. Everything this mask did right, it did two things wrong, kind of thing. But, yeah. The M17, it's an interesting mask, at least. I'm glad I finally got one, thanks to the people who kept saying, Oh, there's an M17 on eBay, there's an M17 on eBay. Because um, it was like 40 quid, which is more than I'd really want to pay for an M17. But then I kind of went, it's an American mask and I can't get them easily. And it's an iconic historical mask. So now I just need to get an M40. And I've kind of got the American masks from... The Cold War to the end of the Cold War because I, I have the M9, I've got an M17 now, I've got my MCU-2P or the MCU-2P of the voice thing, um, so I just need an M40. I mean I'd love an Avon M50 but they cost a lot of money at the moment so probably not going to get one of those. But yeah, the M17, what a cool mask. Um, again it's redesigning the wheel and I don't know if I could say it's a good mask or a great mask but it's a cool mask and an interesting one um, but yeah an odd thing the M17 but I'm glad I've got one